Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the devotional this week. Uh, bear with me. <laughs> it's a little windy today. We're going to try and get this done through the wind. Hopefully, it's not too rough. Uh, I will stop if it gets too bad. Uh, and allow me to be an obnoxious Carolina fan for a second. Thank you. <laughs> so, as you know, we've been in the book of John. We are now hitting John chapter 3. Now, obviously, critical critical chapter in the life of Jesus critical chapter in our Christian faith but in John chapter 3 we're going to start out with Nicodemus okay Nicodemus has an encounter with Jesus at this point so in John chapter 3 verse 1 now there was a, fair, a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a member of the Jewish ruling council he came to Jesus at night and said rabbi we know you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with him in reply Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Nicodemus asked, how can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked, surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. In verse 5, he says, Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. In verse 9, how can this be, Nicodemus asked. So there you have Nicodemus, who's obviously a Pharisee, okay? Very clearly it says he's a Pharisee, member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus at night, which, again, I, talk, I talked over and over and over about how John is such a creative writer and how he, he wrote things in a way that implied things that you should that you can garner um or that you can glean i guess maybe from from what he's saying and and just the word the wording and the verbiage he used um like very said at night okay the uh, very central theme in everything john did and wrote was um light and darkness night and day right and how you're doing things in light is good and light is good darkness is evil is bad right Okay, so that's something that John talked about in the Gospel of John and in his epistles that he wrote, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Okay, very, very clear subject that he talked about over and over and over. Here he said that Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Why would he say that? Okay, obviously there's a couple of reasons. Possibly, uh, just talk about how he, how he was doing this in secrecy. Okay, he was trying to hide it. And also possible that Maybe he was being, maybe he, John felt that Nicodemus was being deceitful and trying to catch Jesus in something. Okay. Either way, it's very critical. I, I, I like how John writes, and that is something that we should, you should always look for, especially in John's writing, is those little bitty things like that um, where he hints at something else, he implies something else, he writes it in a way that would, that would um, mean that there's something else going on there, right? Okay, so Nicodemus came at night whatever whatever that means okay obviously it's a secret and he's implying and he's inquiring of jesus hey you know obviously you're from god but come on now and i think that's the thing about about this scenario is he said obviously you're from god but really who are you right no because he said no one can do these signs they could do work all these miracles and do all these miraculous signs if they weren't from god it's impossible and it's true it's impossible right I want you to remember that as well, is that, hey, if this isn't from God, or if the, if the Bible is not from God, then Jesus is not from God. But it's impossible to not be from God if you're doing all these amazing works, correct? So remember that if you're having a hard time, maybe if you're doubting a little bit, hey, Jesus, Jesus' life and all the miracles he worked and rising from the dead, like we talked about last week, proves he's from God proves it's God working correct but again Jesus said <laughs> Jesus said you know I tell you the truth no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again so now he's, he's confusing Nicodemus Nicodemus asking a question and Jesus gave him a statement that makes him ask another question right because that, that's that's what Jesus was great at is saying things in a way that makes you go but what you know and ask another question he wants you to start inquiring of him and it's same it is today he wants you to start inquiring of him all right and so now so Nicodemus how is this possible what do you mean born again what does born again mean I'm, I've already been born how can I how can this happen again 
So Jesus says, I'll tell you the truth that no one can enter, enter the kingdom of God. So first he said, see the kingdom of God. Now he says, enter the kingdom of God. Unless he is born of water and the spirit. So I said, water and the spirit. Okay, so water is, is born of natural birth. Spirit is born of the spirit, correct? Because he went on to say the next verse, flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. So flesh and spirit. So obviously we're all born once. We're all here. We've been born, obviously. That's, no, there's, okay, no argument there, right? But be, be born of the Spirit. Spirit gives birth to Spirit. In other words, a rebirthing of yourself. A making new, which is very central to our Christian faith. You must be born again, okay? A lot of times people are confused about if they've really been saved or not. Am I really saved? Am I really, am I, am I saved? Am I going to heaven? I want to know for sure that I'm going to heaven. A lot of times doubts can arise, am I really saved? You don't know for sure. You know, what you do know for sure is that you're human, that you've made a lot of mistakes. Hey, I've sinned a lot. You know, and that concerns you because you don't want to be disqualified from heaven, but at the same time, you don't know how in the world that somebody who's done the things you've done can possibly be allowed to enter the presence of Jesus. That's a real human thought that we all deal with all the time because we understand we're human. <laughs> We understand that. We, we, can, we understand very clearly where we've messed up. We understand very clearly that, hey, I'm a sinner. How in the world can a perfect God, a holy God, allow somebody as filthy as me into the kingdom of heaven? It's very simple. God's grace is amazing. God's grace goes further beyond what you can imagine or comprehend. He is so, so amazing. His love is so priceless. That he sees you, sees you for who you are, but has covered you with his blood. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He died on the cross so that all your mistakes, all your transgressions, all your sin, all your evilness inside of your inside of your heart and in your life can be forgiven, and that you can live forever with him. So when Jesus says you must be born again, he means born of the Spirit. Okay, born of the Spirit. In other words, there needs to be a time in your life where you've submitted your, your life and your heart to the kingdom of to, to God, to the kingdom of God, to His purpose, to His will, and you know that you were changed that moment. All right, this is the most serious I could possibly be. That you know there was a moment in your life where your life changed, where you were a changed individual. That you know God came in your heart and saved you. Now, maybe you've messed up since then, and that's okay. Jesus, want, God wants to forgive that through the blood of Jesus as well. And he wants, maybe you need to start over. You know, maybe maybe you've got a point in your life where, where hey, I've, I know I was saved, I know I am saved, but I have a messing up. Well, you can rededicate your life. You can recommit your life to him right now. And that doesn't mean you're not going to heaven or that you weren't going to heaven. It just means maybe, maybe you need to recommit your life. But if, if you're watching this, and maybe you've been a, a believer in God, you know he exists. Maybe you know that he's real. That's all, that's all great. But if you can't tell me a time when your life was changed in an instant, that you were rebirthed, that you were a new creation in an instant, search your heart and, search and, and, and see, hey, have I ever been born again? Have I ever submitted my life to, to, to Jesus? Have I, have I ever surrendered my, surrendered my heart to God and to his will and allowed him to change my life? You know, if you can't say that, if you can't tell me the time, there's a time in your life that's happened, I want you to seriously search your heart and, and, you know, and figure out, hey, do I need to commit my life to Jesus? Do I need to surrender my heart to God? Do I need to be born again still? Just because I believe he exists does not mean that I have ever been saved. All right. I want you to seriously think about that because there's nothing more critical to a person's life, more critical to a person's eternity than knowing that they are born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. It's very clear. There's no arguing what he said there in John chapter 3. He said, you must be born again. And so, no matter what, I want you to understand this. God's grace is greater than your sin. God's grace is greater than your, than your humanity. His love goes beyond what we can comprehend. So just because you've, you've sinned in your past, just because you will sin in the future, does not mean that you can't go to heaven, okay? I want you to be, be sure of that, that if you surrender your, your life to Jesus, 
if you've if you've committed your heart to God, if you ask Him to come in your life and save you, then you are born again. Okay. Maybe you messed up, but you are born again. All right. But if you've never done that, do it today. Say, Jesus, Heavenly Father, God, I'm a sinner. I need to be born again. Lord, come into my heart and save me. I ask you now, in Jesus' name, to change my life forever, to make me a new creation as I surrender my heart to you. In Jesus' name. Right? Say, say something like that. Pray something like that. Sincerely talk to God like in that way. And allow him to change your life forever again. Hey, my name is Jason. This is Art of Creation Homestead. If you have praise reports or comments, please leave them below, okay? We'd love to hear from you and pray for you. Or, or any prayer requests especially, right? So thank you so much for watching. My name is Jason. This is Art of Creation Homestead. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.